In four wheel drives, we're often lifting our four wheel drives and raising the suspension for obvious reasons. Now, have you ever heard people talking about caster correction and going, ah, what's caster correction? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain it and show you some of the ways that you can modify caster correction in a uh, radius arm setup vehicle like these these differentials out of an 80 series Land Cruiser. Here at Mad Map 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get the notifications. So, caster, what is it? Well, in simple terms, think of a shopping trolley and the wheels, they're caster wheels. You probably already know that. What does that mean? Well, they've got the pivot point at the top and the, the axle of the wheel sits behind that pivot point. So when the pivot moves along, it drags the wheel behind it. Now on a shopping trolley, they've got massive amount of caster so that they can go all over the shop and cause us grief when we're shopping. But the same effect is in effect on a, for, on a vehicle, all vehicles. And it's quite important to have good caster and the correct caster for your vehicle because it affects the way the steering handles. If you have incorrect caster, it's kind of like when the shopping trolley wheel is in front of the, the, the wheel. So, you, you know, this is your pivot and you're pushing forward like that. And this wheel is very uncontrollable in that situation. It wants to be behind, okay? So if you have incorrect caster, you can have steering that gets very vague and uncontrollable, or you can have very heavy steering as well. So having the correct caster is important. So with this, this is out of an 80 series Land Cruiser and it's going to be going into the COVID 80 there behind me. And I thought this is the ideal time to show you caster and the effect that putting a suspension lift has on the geometry of your, of, your, of your axles. So hopefully this is helpful for you and gonna unlock a bit of that mystery. So it all starts here. This is the top kingpin bearing cap and then there's the bottom one down here. They have bearings inside and when you turn the steering wheel, these wheels rotate on those bearings, okay? Those bearings, when they're designed and it's all engineered in here, they're actually set up with a little bit of caster to the, um, to the actual center line of the wheel. So you get that caster effect. And it's usually only a few degrees, all right? So what happens when we lift our four wheel drive from a standard ride height? Well, it all happens back here. So we, we go and get, there you go, a nice three inch spring for the 80 series Land Cruiser. So now that's lifted the chassis away from the differential, which is exactly what we want. This is connected to the chassis. So I'll just take that off so we don't have a big boom crash and a disaster. We lift the chassis. Therefore, this arm is now going to lift that direction. Does that make sense? What happened to the differential housing here? It rolled forward. What happens to these two kingpin bearings? Their attitude in relation to the center line of the differential housing changes. And that's changed the caster of the vehicle. The bigger the lift, the more we change the caster and the more unstable the vehicle will become. So how do we correct it? Well, there's a number of different ways that you can modify and correct the caster in the vehicle. And a, a one way would be literally cut all of this bracketry off and remount the bracketry on the diff housing. Not really the way you're going to do it because it's very extensively involved. So there's a number of simple ways and I'm just gonna run through some of those. The first, we'll start back here. We install what we call drop boxes. So we've put our suspension lift in and we've lifted this pivot point up with the chassis. So you put a drop box in, which goes between the chassis and this and effectively lowers that back down again. That works and it can work quite well. The issue most four wheel drivers who are doing lifts have is that it creates a big hang up point back here on the chassis. Certainly on the Toyota Land Cruisers, you've now got this big drop box hanging down. And so that's not our preferred way to do it for the most part. There's some guys who will like that. And this isn't about the, the likes and the, all of that sort of thing. 
The other way that you'll often hear people talk about is by changing the cast to correction bushes, which are these bushes in here, and you fit one there and one there, you fit those bushes in a special way, and it changes the way the differential sits in the radius arm and rotates it back to the correct setting. That works. The issue with that setup, and, and this differential has had this problem because I ran some of those bushes many years ago in this diff. When you flex up a lot, you load those bushes and they go beyond their, their ability to flex in the bush. And if you'd like to see how the different bushes work, head on up to the linked video where I talk about poly, poly bushes versus rubber bushes. Watch that. But what happens then when the bushes run out of flex is these mounting brackets here on the differential housing start to, to have to flex to move. And I literally ripped this mounting bracket out of this diff housing and I've had to repair it all and weld it all back in and do the repair to that because of those caster correction bushes. So they certainly work and they have their place, but if you're looking for a bit of a flex monster, not that this was, but if you're looking for a bit of a flex monster or something that's gonna do a lot of hardcore wheeling, then the, I suggest the caster correction bushes are not the way to go because of that issue. You won't find this bracket tends to break, it'll tend to be this driver's side one that breaks. Okay, now the next way we can do it is caster correction plates, which are plates that will take on this bolt and the rear bolt and they'll sit in there and they'll relocate this hole down lower. When you, by doing that, you effectively roll the differential back this direction and correct the, cast, the caster. They're a nice solution in as much as they're easy to fit, you can bolt them in at home and uh, you know, uh, they solve the problem as well. They do tend to hang a little bit lower so they can be a little bit more vulnerable to being smacked on rocks and that but I've got mates who run them happily and for the most part they work very well. So I would probably tend to go for a caster correction plate system over a caster correction bush. The next way you can do it and this is pretty much zero cost if you've got a, a welder and it's what they call the, the washer mod. And it's a little bit backyard and some people would say it's illegal, but it's the system I've used here. <laughs> and so what you do, the original bolt hole here was about uh, 12 millimeters higher in this bracket. So what I've done is I've got my die grinder out and I've slotted that hole down 12 millimeters, center to center. I've then got some washers, three millimeter thick washers, and welded them into the new hole location. And then I backfill the, that, so there's all metal all through there, there's no old holes to, showing. And now I've effectively moved this hole down, which rotates the differential back. So that's a, if you've got welding facilities, that's a, virtually a no cost job and uh, a way you can do it for a small lift. Two to three inches is about all you're going to get for caster correction. But I find that's enough for my wheeling and my, uh, uh, um, you know, setups. I, I don't run big lifts on my four drives because your center of gravity gets too high. There is a drawback to this system and it's evident in this diff housing. You can bend this drag link here, or tie rod I should say, at the rear of the diff because when you flex up, it can overload itself on the radius arm. So you have gotta be a little bit you know, cautious around that and keep an eye on things. Okay, so that has its, it's cheap, it's easy, but it does have its drawbacks. The other method you can use is in your kingpin bearings, you can get a special bearing that is offset to the center in the bearing race. And you can install those in there and it will correct the caster. Now they work very well. They do have some limits as to how much caster they can put in there, but they're an effective way to do it. So what is really the best way, in my opinion, to correct caster? Well, there's many companies out there um, that create new radius arms, which is this arm here. And they create them and design them so that it corrects the caster for the lift that you're running. And realistically, that is the best way 
to correct your caster in your, in your vehicle. I hope that's helped you start to see some of the different ways you can install caster correction into your four wheel drive, especially the live axles type vehicles and some of the pros and cons anyway. Look guys, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button as well. Share this video around with your mates and tell us in the comments down below what you think is the best solution for caster correction. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.